So I want to talk about how to set up Arnold to render this character, how to add an environment map, and how to set up materials. So here we go. So my render of choice in 3ds Max is Arnold, because that's what it comes with it, and Arnold is just amazing. Um, so we're going to talk about setting up Arnold shaders and setting up a really simple um, HDRI to um, render the scene with. So I get my HDRIs from, from this site, hdrihaven.com. Um, if you just click on one of them, so I'm just going to pick like this one and you can download it. Um, for lighting in itself, you only need like 2K tops. One or 2K will do for just for lighting. If you want to see the background um, in all its um, pixel beauty then uh, you're going to need to download something heavier but just for the sake of it I'm going to grab this 2k one and download it so with the HDRI downloaded uh, what do we do with it well we're going to need to set up Arnold to uh, see this environment map and um, we can do that in two steps so firstly we need to click on the um, render icon up here bring up the render dialog and you need to make sure that we got Arnold selected as our render in production rendering mode and if we switch over to active shade mode we should also make sure that we've got Arnold selected as well. Then if I close this uh, we can go to rendering environment uh, which is also the shortcut 8. I'm not bring up this dialog we need to do two things. We need to go and choose our environment map which we've just downloaded so click on this button here choose bitmap and find uh, the HDR I from HDR Haven. Open that. Just click OK, and it appears in this slot. And then we're going to need to set some sort of exposure control because this is a real light setup, and we want to manage the exposure of our camera so that it doesn't blow out or become too dark. So we're going to choose a physical camera exposure control. And I'm going to drop the EV down, I think, to something like 8, which is quite good for daylight. And let's have a quick peek at that. So we've got the active shade mode up here with the button for the active shade mode. If I press it, it brings up this window. And you can see that our character already has actually material on it. Um, but it doesn't really matter because uh, we're going to go over how to assign one. And I can revolve the viewport and you can see that the figure updates. I guess the important thing here is that... Um, my character isn't blown out. You can see the highlights are not clamping to white. If I change the EV value and reduce this number, you can see that change the exposure value it goes too low, everything goes too dark, but I think eight is probably about right for this. Oops, just type in that value, eight. Okay, so let's close that for the moment. So the next thing we need to do is um, assign materials to our figure. And because the character is split up into separate objects, this is going to be relatively easy. So let's do that now. So we've got the material editor dialog up here. There are two types of material dialogs. And we can see that because of the small white triangle at the bottom of the button. If you click and hold one of these buttons, it's called a flyout. And you'll see that we get some options to click on. We've got this one, which looks like a washing machine and this one which is meant to be like a tree view. So this is the Slate Material Editor, which has already got some stuff assigned. I am going to go and clear view. Yes. So over on the left here, we have a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we have our material shaders and our surface texture shaders, various other bits and bobs. We want to go into materials and we want to choose a Arnold surface. I'm going to choose a standard surface and drag it into the view here. If I zoom in you can see it's got all this complicated stuff. Uh, which to be honest I'm not going to go into right now, I've got another video on this. Um, we're really only interested in the base colour right now so let's just double click on this and it'll bring up our surface shader dialog. So we're going to do two things, we uh, three things. We're going to set this value to 1, 
uh, it defaults to 0.8 which is really annoying should be one and then we can choose a color so let's make this guy uh, let's make him some sort of white dude so let's pick a skin tone a vague skin tone there we go, some pasty white dude and um, we're gonna change the roughness to like 0.4 or something like that so this is clearly the color and this roughness value here I mean specular roughness that's um, how reflective the surface is um, what the kinds of reflections you get rather so the, the bigger the roughness value the more blurry um, your reflections and again I've got a, a video on these parameters uh, which I'll link to here but for the moment we're just gonna set that roughly to like 0.4 maybe 0.3 if we wanted to be quite shiny and then we've got multiple ways of assigning this material to our character we can let's just get out of the way we can do it in two ways we can select the thing we want to texture like that and we can press this button assign material to selection so as long as we've got this selected and our object selected we can assign the material to selection like that. We can take this connection, so I'm just clicking here and dragging, and I can drag and drop that onto any part of the figure. And I can also select multiple objects like that. And again, we can assign that material to multiple objects there. So now you've got this material live on our figure. Let's run the active shader again and see what happens. So now we've got um, a pasty pink dude, and we can, this is sliding off the screen a bit, but let's see if we can minimize it for the video. So we can rotate around, it updates, and we can change the color. So let's give him a bit of a tan, like that. You see it's all touched through the same thing. We can change the roughness value as well, and this is quite interesting because uh, it's live so drop the roughness down you can see that everything starts to go really shiny and you see we've got some really sharp reflections on the back here and that's catching where's the sun so we've got a big blowing out bit of cloud here and that's bouncing um, the glancing angle is bouncing the cloud and so we see in the cloud and reflections just there and on his arm as well if we um, change the roughness value so we dial that roughness value up. You can see that um, the reflections are less uh, specky. They become more and more blurry. After um, really about 0.6, the um, the, blur the reflections are so, so blurry, they're indistinct, completely indistinct. So normally I'd never really want to assign um, any roughness value above 0.6. It's kind of pointless. So let's just pick 0.4 again. That will do. So we can carry on, um, let's just OK that, assigning materials to various aspects of the figure. So let's just zoom out of this. So a bit like the normal Max objects, we can click on this object and we can shift drag it and that will clone it. So double click on there, we can call that a skin. And double click on this one we can call that uh, cloth let's say so let's make a some sort of denim color like uh, unsaturated blue of some sort okay that and we can assign that to let's assign it to that and that so he's got some sort of denim waistcoat on he's like some 70s retro dude right so now he's got a, a blue waistcoat and blue trousers. And we can say, give him some different colored shoes. Let's drag, select that. We've got two different types of selection shown on this dialog. So these white squares here around this preview, they show that the currently selected object is this material. And then this dotted line around uh, the material here that shows um, that 
this uh, box is highlighted in the parameter view here so you can see all the parameters of that shader it can get a bit confusing what's going on um, so if I double click on this we've now got that this cloth standard material is um, highlighted with these white squares because it's on that selected object if I click off the object you can see we got these little unfilled triangles and that means the object is used in the scene but not currently selected and over here we've got um, this square has no triangles in it and that means that it's not used in the scene at all but we do have the dotted line around it which means that it is a selected and highlighted in uh, the parameters added here confusingly if I um, click off the object it's not that material shader dialog is not selected but it is highlighted in the parameter view and this is the most confusing thing if I click on this this is selected this is the material I'm going to assign but this one is the one that's um, being displayed in the parameter view and I think that's possibly the most confusing feature of this um, editor material 31 is the parameters we're viewing in the editor but the one we've got selected at the moment is cloth so when I go and assign material to the current selection um, I'm assigning cloth which is blue not this one which is going to be shoes I actually have to select it um, and we make that say let's give them some red sneakers assign that to selection so now I've got this selected that's the thing we're viewing in the parameter editor I'm going to cl uh, click on this box here and that's signs it to the object in the scene so he's kind of wearing well, maybe not deep enough they're kind of hot pink aren't they yeah let's maybe can make it a bit darker so this is an introduction to our materials and we've learned how to assign colors to separate objects in the scene um, it's a two-part video so uh, in the next video we're going to look at assigning multiple colors to the same object using multi-materials and uh, I'll see you then.